After watching this video, I hope you will have a better grasp of how you can use technology to help you work through this investigation. Uh, also, I hope you can use another form of technology to make a really polished report or presentation to, to improve your typing. So first and foremost, let's hope you've read your investigation carefully. Um, can we, I hope you all know how you can type in an equation. If you don't, let's quickly run through that. You've got a Word document. We just go to insert equation and it's got type equation here. So let's see that we want to um, do a polynomial. You can write y equals, you could write f of x, you could write p of x. So if we go p of x, I'm just going to write p bracket x close bracket equals and I can type all things here. Um, the first one that I'm going to do will be x minus 8 and I'm just typing this using the keys on my keyboard now this is the one that I just want but while we're here imagine that because part two of this is going to say instead of having one two three four distinct real roots what if you had a repeated one so that would mean let's say we got rid of this factor here and I wanted to square this now ideally what I would do is when I want to have something to a power I'm going to use this so you have to press that first and then you wait for the subscripts to come up so we want this one here and I can then fill in the gap and we have x plus 4 and then I go up here and I pop the squared. So that's how we can do a power. As you can see we've got fraction options. If I press that I can have a fraction top and bottom. Um, you know, play around. You won't have to use any square roots or anything. Here's, here's someone we recognize. So, you know, see what can come out of this. It's quite handy and I use it a lot. Um, also, let's say I've typed something so I wanted this factor to be to a power of three so I can I've already typed it I can now press that and if I press it now I can say to the power of three or four or two or whatever okay so that's our little equation editor now let's just go back and pop in my original function that we wanted to play with so what we want to do now is look at how we can graph this and there's various options that we can do. One of the packages that I use to graph this that I find really helpful. It's a bit irritating the first time you use it, but I find it really helpful. And by the way, this is now, if I want this to be to the left or in something I can, you know, type before, after, and so on. It's just a, an object that's in my Word document. So if you check Daymap, you will see that you can all sign up and get this package called f of x. Um, because I'm using a Microsoft um, Word here, Microsoft product, I'm not in a Mac, this sits in my Word document in your, on your Mac. This will be a separate um, application that you have. And so when you go, and I suggest you go fx draw, um, it all happens in fx graph as well. I'm just a fan of FX Draw. So you press, I press that, and what happens with you is you'll get this, this just this screen here without it being in Word, and you'll have to save it as a separate file. Anyway, so to graph that, we press that, this little one here, so we click on it, and once it's highlighted there, I just drag my cursor in the screen and I get a simple axis. You'll see how this is very similar to our. Uh, graphics calculator in a minute. I'm going to pull that up at the same time in, the, in a second. Now I right click just in the screen, right click, and I can now just type in y equals, and I'm sure you don't even have to type the y. Again, experiment. So I type my function in the same one that I typed before, and remember the point of this uh, task is to find out. A uh, relationship between the number of turning points and points of inflection compared to the number of or type of roots that you have. So if I type that up and I've just press OK, 
that's what I get and that doesn't look very flash. Now I can fiddle with the scale on here and I'll show you in a minute but while we're here I'm going to show you you can use your graphics calculator to give you a bit of a, a heads up. So I've typed the same equation in your graphics calculator. Shift view window so it's STD and it's the same scale that I've got in FX draw then you can see I get a pretty similar um, go there pretty similar to what I have in my graphics calculator we could do zoom auto and set the scale ourselves here but we can also cheat a little bit so I can do this and go G solve max and it gives me my maximum here of 410 so I can straight away go into view window and I know that my Y max yes we know it has to be 410 I might go a little bit more go 450 or maybe 500 so we have a look at that and you can see already that that's looking quite good um, just a quick thing here when I go G solve minimum um, I actually know that there's going to be two minimums one here and one here and you can see that this has got a wider gap so this will be a bigger a much lower minimum so when I go G solve min that gives me so minus 92 gives me my minimum but if I push over I get minus 966 so that's the other minimum that's a lot lower so I can now go back and go shift view window and scroll down to my minimum and put minus 1000 so pretty quickly bang I've got my graph and we can see quickly we've got turning points here one two three so it's four real distinct roots and that gives us one two three turning points you can record that in your table the issue that we're going to have is we want to find out how many points of inflection it has now just by inspection remember a point of inflection is where the graph changes from being concave to convex or convex to concave you can see pretty quickly one here because it goes it's convex and then it becomes concave so somewhere there there's a point of inflection and then it's concave and somewhere around here we go convex. I'm going to switch back and forth from these packages because once I've now got this scale happening here I can transfer back to my FX draw. I right click in the scale and if I go here scale I get my same sort of setup or similar to my graphics calculator and so here with the Y minimum I can change that to a thousand which is what I have on my graphics and 500 was the maximum and look at that that's a great graph that we have there we can see it now and you didn't have to fiddle around a lot so you feel free once again right click inside and press scale and you can change your minimum max and you could have just done that by guessing right from the word go I just find it helps having that graphics calculator get your min and max and you can find a, a nice scale pretty quickly now here's the great thing with FX draw please notice that the little uh, green things have to be highlighted here because now when I hover my cursor if I hover here with the minimum it actually gives it oh I, shoved, I moved it if I hover there I've got local minimum now I right click and if I say add annotation and now I have to go back and print. If I, if I try and go move this now, because this is still highlighted, I'll draw another set of axes. So click onto the pointer and you can now move this out of the way. And obviously you can do that to all the other points. Although if we have a look at the moment, now I'm trying to get the maximum here and nothing is coming up. That's because I haven't got my um, graph highlighted. So again, click in the middle, see how the green squares come up and now when I move uh, it, it comes up so again it's there I can right click add annotation that comes up with local minimum the brilliance doesn't stop there because with finding your point of inflection again it's where it changes from being convex to concave so again nothing's happening because the green bits aren't highlighted so click in your graph and just hover the cursor where you think and lo and behold there we go it has point of inflection so again right click add annotation now you can go through and do that for all of them because there'll be another one here 
and here. Just to tidy this up and make it look pretty, you can play around. This is already highlighted. Actually, we'll just unhighlight that. So let's try the local maximum. I click in it, so that's just a left click. And now, once I right click, you can see down here, things start to pop up. I can change the color of the box. So I might decide that all my turning points, so local max, local min, I'm going to make them all a certain color. Um, this bit here changes the um, box, I think, the color of the box, you can play around. So let's maybe have that as pink. The line that goes, oh, there's, so there's the line at the moment it's saying there's no anchor style. So you could put that so it's got a little ball where it meets the dot. Um, this is the inside color or the outside box I'm not quite sure this is what's going to be inside the box uh, maybe we want that to be a little bit lighter and there we go we've got that you could change the color inside I'm sure um, could make that softer pink you can also if you don't want to have all of that you might think I don't actually need the value now that's up to you if you would like to have the value of the actual coordinate but this is it here so if I notice if I just get rid of that I might say this is my turning point number two and there we have it you might think well I'm going to have all my turning points in a row down here so I could change that one as well and your point of inflections we could have it a different color so we can go and say well let's make sure that they stand out quite um, clearly we'll go for green a bit of fluoro green green again and we'll have that as green okay and we can have that as point of inflection number one as I said, if you want to actually have them labeled and keep the coordinate, you know, you've seen here that this is coming up as an exact answer. And I think, well, that doesn't help me at all. I would like the actual decimal. We can come back over to your graphics calculator and go G solve min. And here you've got your values. OK, um, so that was an exact on our calculator. This is minus 92. Is that what we got here? Yep. Same thing. So you can see this is, is quite handy. Uh, to finish this off, um, I'm going to again right click in here. And if I hover on the graph itself, you can see that the equation comes up. And it's getting a little bit sensitive now. So right click again, add annotation. So this is now the equation itself. Can pop that up the front. I might think I don't want an anchor for this because that's just going to be um, the, the title of the graph. And so you can see it doesn't have then that line. Once I click out, the line isn't there anymore, the anchor point. You might not like these anchor points at all. If you want, you can get rid of them. So say none just with that. And so then this is sitting up here, turning point number two. Oh that come out no it hasn't come out well you can play with that and see if you can remove it okay so that's why I just really like FX draw and it does everything for you um, remember when you do this when I, I click this and it will now embed in my windows and uh, my word sorry you will have to save it as a specific file so save it as graph 1 graph 2 and so on so I'll just show you how it looks when I put up in my Word document, uh, the Archie Blows. It's not a huge thing. You can you can change the size. I can make it smaller, like that. Or if I wanted to, I can make it bigger. Remember, we've got a, a page limit. So that's a quick run through of how you can get a, a really nice graph using FX Draw and you can find the points of inflection, the turning points and have them labeled and you can keep the label if you want um, or you could type it in yourself. All right. Now another option you have to draw graphs is a free package on your computer. 
if you think you don't like the look of FX Draw, we've now got Desmos. So you just type in Desmos into your web browser and, and choose the graphic calculator option and we get this. Now you might not be able to see the, the bottom couple of keys here on my video, but that's okay. And up here we just type in the function that we've got. So I'm just typing in, you can use these keys here, so you can put X and bracket and all that sort of stuff, but I'm just using my keyboard to type it in. Um, oops, and x plus 4, and finally x plus 6. And you can see our graph over here is pretty much what we got again on our graphics calculator um, and whatnot. Now you can shift these up and zoom in and out over here, and you can use your keys or your um, tracking device to, to zoom in zoom out with that I like this so if we click on this your graph settings we can see here we've got our scale so like we did using our graphics calculator we were able to get a pretty decent scale and find out what it should have been so we go a thousand here and we had the maximum of 500 and if we click out of that we've got this cute little graph that we had before. Uh, where this probably falls down a tad is you notice if I'm hovering, you know, I haven't worked out how to, I'm sure there's some option there where you can say plot the max and the min or the point of inflection. If you find out, feel free to share with others. But if you want to use this now, what we would have to do is we could just put a point in. Now back to our graphics calculator where we've graphed it, uh, we had minus. 5.1 so I can just pop in so I clicked in there and now minus 5.10 comma and back to our graphics calculator minus 92.08 and go in there minus 92.08 close that um, you'll see that it pops the point there we can label and then it appears. Um, I try to write here point of in, uh, it's not a point of inflection, it's a turning point, so TP. And you know, I'd have a key somewhere to say what TP represents, turning point or local max, TP1. Um, as you can see, it removes the um, coordinate, so you might just have to type that again. I don't use this very often, so again, if you find shortcuts or it does things that I haven't shown you, please share. And we can add it to the video. Um, okay. The problem with this is, if again, as you said, if I hover, how do I get my my point of inflection? So the turning points are quite easy to get from your graphics calculator. And the turning points is G solve max min and what have you. So we'll go again. G solve max. There it is up there. We can write that down. G solve min. It gave us the first one, and we just move our arrow key over to get the second one. But how do we get our point of inflection? This involves us using calculus, which we do in year 12. Now, you don't actually have to use it, uh, do it. The calculator will do it for you. And you just keep doing it over and over again. So watch this, and it's a, just a quick way of getting your point of inflection. So go down into the next function, spare, and you press option. And we see here calc, so we're going to press F2. We want this funny little symbol here, d slash dx. That's the derivative with respect to x. And we want that of this function here. So here's the y. I pop f1. And that's, if my gra graph here is in y1, so I pop a y there. If I was wanting the derivative of whatever's in y3, then I'd put y3. We just press enter. Notice that just is now stored as x. And we press enter again. And this red graph you won't sort of understand a lot of it but now the max and min of this red graph give me the point of inflection so if you just go back to our fx draw oh and I got rid of that didn't I so let's go back I'll open up fx draw again and right and click in it so to make it highlighted again so I'll add annotation 
So we know from FX draw that our point of inflection is minus 3.162 and 136. Let's see if we get the same answer here. So we go G solve and I want the maximum. And I press that and nothing happens. Because I've got more than one graph, you can see it sort of flashing. Do I want it of this graph here? It's like no. So I use my arrow keys here. It's of that one. I press enter. You can see minus 3.162. Two minus 3.162. The y value here is 136. The y value here is different because I don't want the y value on this red graph. I want it on the blue. So that means I have to now do a y calc. So G solve a y calc of the blue graph. So yes, we select that. And when x is minus 3. Point, what was it again? 3.162, 3.162, press enter, and 137, pretty close to what we had there, okay? Y isn't exact because we rounded off. So that sort of is a bit of a downer where we're using Desmos because it doesn't, I haven't found out how it can add those different things. So you could now add another point. So again, click in here and you can just pop another point in. Some of the bonuses is that it's quite clear looking um, you can play. So that's how we use FX Draw and Desmos. On your laptops, you may also have a, a software called Geometer Sketchpad. You could have a look at that. Just depends on what you're comfortable using, All right? Uh, and even back here, if you think, I don't like the grid, remember you can right-click, go back here, you can say grid, and you can unclick the grid, and then it's gone, and we've just got a simple um, graph there. So play with these a little bit, but not don't waste too much time. So hopefully that's going to help you with how you can use your technology to complete this investigation. Feel free to ask any more questions that you may have. Oh, and just remember that you want to save these graphs all the time, whether it be Desmos. Um, I think with this, sometimes you have to take a screenshot. So that's another reason why I prefer to go with FX Draw. So make sure you do save them because you might want to go back and alter one just a little bit. You don't want to have to recreate it all over again, although you should have seen that it doesn't take that long to draw a graph anyway. Good luck.